All right, well, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, coming out this afternoon. Um, my name is Tom Tilley. For anyone who's disappointed that I'm not a Triple J reporter, um, I apologise, um, but I've been, trip uh, I've been Triple J. I've been Tom Tilley for longer than he has. So uh, I won't be offended if you, uh, if you wish to leave now. Um, I'm not a Triple J reporter. Uh, I'm a local software developer for a company called Zeus Workforce. Um, and that's what I'm doing now, but about 10 years ago with my wife and two children, we moved to Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. So I'm going to be talking about some, some bits and pieces that I built while we were in Thailand. Um, not necessarily in that order, but we're going to be talking about uh, helmets, uh, things you can make out of PVC pipe, and about uh, robots. Now, uh, Thailand has been in the news uh, quite recently. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, the king of Thailand died, which is very, very sad. He was uh, uh, very much loved by the people. Um, and Thailand's also been in the news because Thailand is the most dangerous place for Australian tourists. And more Australians die in Thailand than in any other country. And the United Nations has uh, just released some figures to say that Thailand is, has the second most dangerous roads in the world. And uh, these are countries shown in red. Other than uh, Thailand there are uh, countries with very, very dangerous roads. Part of the reason for that is because you tend to see things like this all the time uh, in, in Thailand. Now, um, in Australia, the year is 2016. Um, and that's about 2,000 years since uh, Christ was born. In Thailand, the year is actually 2559. Um, and so Thailand's kind of 543 years in the future. Um, and the reason for that is because the Thai calendar is based on the death of Buddha. Um, and so coincidentally, 2559 is about six years after the Halo series of video game uh, events. And it's the year when the upcoming Halo Wars 2 game is actually set. Now, although it's very dangerous to ride a motorbike in Thailand, um, both of my children, my wife and I, all rode motorbikes at different points. And I thought, well, we can, we can be safe. We can wear helmets and uh, leather jackets and things. But we can have some fun while we do that. And so uh, this is uh, a helmet I made based on uh, Master Chief from the Halo series of video games. Um, and it's all just uh, camp mat foam and uh, uh, duct tape and spray. And so the original black helmet I bought is shown bottom left. Uh, the funky sort of vent things are actually just cut from the end of a green toilet brush there. Um, and just again built up using foam, uh, duct tape, and uh, some spray paint. Now, one of our students uh, in an English, uh, conversational English course we're involved in was a big fan of uh, Blossom from the Powerpuff Girls. And so uh, I made a, uh, a helmet for him, um, which would sort of like vibrate and pull your head back at about 60 kilometers per hour, but it, it looked kind of cool. Uh, when my wife got her uh, motorbike license, I made her a, a Stormtrooper helmet. And uh, just last year, uh, before I left Thailand, um, there's a, a very popular cartoon series in Thailand which uh, came out of Japan in the 1980s called Mobile Suit Gundam. And so uh, this was a, a Gundam helmet that I built. Again, it's all just a high-density foam, uh, stickers, and uh, spray paint. And so you can see a bit of a progression there from uh, up in the top left with the original helmet down to sort of the final result here on the right. But um, uh, a lot of fun and uh, hopefully safe uh, at the same time. Now, one of Thailand's most abundant natural resources is bamboo, and you see a lot of kind of uh, construction done using bamboo in Thailand. Perhaps Thailand's most abundant unnatural resource is blue PVC water pipe. Um, and uh, I'll just hand around a... Uh, this is actually a marshmallow uh, blowpipe gun, one of the first things I built there in Thailand that you can have a look at. Um, but you can use it for all sorts of things. So um, uh, I built my son some, uh, some soccer goals. Uh, when Australia Day comes around, you can build yourself some PVC cricket wickets and uh, a suspicious looking, uh, very Star Trek-like uh, basketball hoop. Now, if the hinges break on your laptop, you can make a, 
uh, PVC pipe uh, support for your screen. You can make a, a workbench out of a door that you bolt to the wall and use some PVC as the legs. And you can build a, a music stand uh, for your kids to uh, practice their music on. Now, a lot of people ask me, uh, even though I'm an IT guy, why I'm so incredibly buff. And uh, the reason for that is because I built a uh, PVC uh, hook for my laptop there to go on the treadmill, and also some uh, PVC push-up bars in the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner here. You can make a nightstand. The, uh, the grey PVC is actually electrical grade, so uh, CD holders, and uh, we needed some, uh, some legs as a prop for a play, and so we've got some, uh, uh, some uh, fake legs here as well. Now, top left, this is called a Hilbert cube. This is a recursive mathematical structure, uh, just made out of some uh, PVC elbows. We've got a chair in the middle there, which has actually been modified for a, a tank uh, game with uh, skid steering. Um, you can build a stand for your guitar, and uh, for again, for our conversational English program, we've got some, um, some hockey sticks just made out of heated and flattened PVC pipe. And uh, this is a, uh, a train whistle made out of some PVC. There's actually three different uh, whistles there, and uh, they're just connected with a piece from a, a plastic water bottle, and so when you blow in the plastic water bottle, you have um, sound coming out all three pipes, and for something that's made out of PVC, it's actually got a very charming, charming sound. So there's a lot that you can do uh, with, with PVC pipe. Now, just kind of coming back to Australia uh, very briefly, but around uh, the turn of the millennium, there was a, a, a dancing game that was very, very popular called Dance Dance Revolution. And uh, my family was living in Melbourne at the time. It was a magical time of year called Hard Rubbish Collection. And my kids and I picked up uh, some old bits of wood, a VCR, an old printer, and we built a very crusty looking uh, Dance Dance Revolution mat. Um, and we needed a way of connecting this to a computer so that we could actually dance. And we had a $20 USB joystick shown up the top there. And so what I did is I modified the joystick and put a connector on the back that was actually patched into the buttons of the joystick. So then we could plug in our uh, dance mat and you could stomp up and down on the dance pads, but the computer would think you were just pressing buttons on the joystick. So it's a way of just externalizing the switches there. And so there's my daughter kind of mid-dance um, hooked up to a laptop uh, playing a dancing game. Now, in Thailand, you can buy a USB joystick for about $3 Australian, about $85 Thai baht. So it's very, very cheap. And for your $3, you get uh, 16 buttons. You get... Um, uh, two uh, thumbsticks, which have both got sort of two axes, so you've got sort of four analog inputs you can play with there. And you've also got two outputs, which are rumble motors inside the joystick, which uh, can actually make it vibrate and shake. Um, and I've got a bag of uh, joysticks here that we can pass around so people can have a bit of a, a look at those. And if you look underneath, you'll see that there's a very simple hack that we can do, just like on that first joystick, to put a connector underneath, it's out the way. If it's done carefully, you can still use the joystick, but you can then plug other things into it and use it as a very, very cheap, kind of essentially a $3 computer interface for all sorts of things. So um, I saw some, uh, PV, uh, some motorbike hand grips um, in, a, in a store, uh, measured up sort of a, a motorbike, and built a, a motorbike game controller. And we'll pass this one around as well. But so this is actually my son uh, playing a, a motorbike game from the uh, movie Tron using a rear projection screen built out of some butcher's paper, a clothes drying rack and some more PVC. Um, so just with some buttons to turn and a mercury switch for acceleration inside of here. So you can pass that one around. And with some students at the university, we wanted something fun to do. Um, and so, using some smaller bits of PVC, we just took this same idea, but thought, well, we could actually just put some switches on some real motorbikes. And so, these four motorbikes are just connected to a single joystick and playing a four-player split-screen uh, motorcycle game. Now, one of the students who played the motorcycle game said, you know, well, that's all right, but I actually like car driving games. Is there anything you can do for car driving? 
And so over a number of evenings, I built a PBC racing car. And again, this is hooked up. You can see a blue joystick there on the ground to connect it to the computer. And I'll show you a video of that a little bit later on. Now, at the university where I uh, taught in Thailand, we thought it'd be fun to take this idea and make it a little bit retro. And so we made a uh, bamboo Formula One car. And again, just hooked up and playing. He's looking over at the monitor there, one of my colleagues, uh, playing a Formula One racing game. But it's actually quite hard to make a wheel uh, out of bamboo. Now, it looks like the university doesn't have money for wind tunnel testing in this photo, but we actually uh, made two of these cars, and uh, with the help of some students, we took them to an orphanage for babies and children with HIV AIDS. And so uh, the, uh, the orphans got to play some of these uh, games and car racing things for a day, which was a lot of fun. Now, back in 2006, uh, when we first moved to Thailand, uh, I wanted to play Guitar Hero, uh, which was kind of a new game at the time, but I didn't have a plastic guitar, and so in Thailand they have um, electronic mosquito zappers. And so using some uh, bits from a Chinese controller, some TV remotes, I built myself a, uh, a bug zapping, well, I took the bug zapping out, but a uh, Guitar Hero, do-it-yourself Guitar Hero guitar. Now, we were going into some of the local schools in Thailand for Science Week, and we're expecting a lot of kids. Um, and so I thought, well, one of the things we could do is apply this same idea to Guitar Hero, and instead of having one guitar with five buttons, you could have five people with one button each. And so we just built some boxes, and you can play this here today um, if you uh, would like to, uh, to try it out. Um, but essentially, splitting out the five buttons from a Guitar Hero controller, so you can have the equivalent of two guitars, 10 people all playing at the same time. So this is at a high school in Thailand for Science Week, and the front row are all sitting there playing, uh, playing Guitar Hero. It's a lot of fun. Uh, for the, the university's equivalent of uh, Thailand's Got Talent, we reused our button hardware for our judges, and we needed a voting machine to work out who'd actually won. So again, this is just powered by a, a USB joystick that's been hacked, and uh, we didn't have a touch screen, so we've got the buttons down the side, and I just wrote some software so that I could vote for their favorite act. This is a virtual pinball machine, and we just take a white office table and bolt a box underneath that's, again, connected to a hacked joystick, and so you've got some flipper buttons and a mercury switch so you can give it a hip and shoulder, and we just connect that to a uh, computer simulation running on a laptop and beam that with an overhead data projector straight onto the table. And with a little bit more funding a few years later at the university, this is the same idea, but built with an LCD TV uh, inside the box instead. Now, I'll just show you a short video, which will give you a bit of an idea about, uh, a bit more idea about some of those things as well. So uh, this is a hovercraft that we built uh, using uh, some of the leftover wood from uh, hard rubbish collection and some vacuum cleaner motors that we were able to find as well. This is the virtual pinball machine in action. And again, it's just got an overhead data projector that's beaming the game just down onto a white office table, but the interface is just hooked up with some buttons via a hacked USB joystick. Okay, this is the four-player uh, motorbike game. And again, there are enough inputs on a single joystick to actually hook up four motorbikes, including the accelerators, to, uh, to play this game, which is inspired by the original Tron movie. Okay, these are the PVC racing cars. And it's all bamboo pipe and uh, rubber bands for a bit of resistance on your accelerator and brake. And on the end of the steering, we've got what's really just a volume knob. Um, but that actually gives you analog steering, and that's patched into one of the uh, joystick axes. So you've actually got nice, smooth analog steering um, on your uh, PVC car. And uh, we've got a two-player version of uh, the arcade game Daytona USA. And so you can sit there in your PVC cars and uh, race against each other. It's a lot of fun. This is the bamboo car. Um, again, you can see we've got a T-piece here that you have to hand to the driver, just like a real Formula One. Um, but, uh, yes, a little bit hard to make a wheel. Um, inside the box here, um, in the foreground, is actually just an upside-down optical mouse. 
And so as my son slides the bit of pizza box backwards and forwards there, he's actually playing a game called Plasma Pong, which is again just beamed onto the table. Now this is something called Coffee Grinder Puzzle Bobble, and this is essentially like an upside down uh, bicycle crank, or like a coffee grinder winch from an ocean going yacht, um, just hooked up to play the classic Japanese Puzzle Bobble arcade game. And I built this just for a, an, an open day at the university in a uh, two player mode here. So it gives you just a quick idea of some of the sorts of things that uh, we're able to do with PVC pipe uh, there in Thailand. So while I've been playing around with PVC and joysticks in Thailand, a couple of professors um, associated with Africa noticed that African students were very, very interested in robotics, um, but they simply couldn't afford robots. Robots were just too expensive for African schools. So they ordered a group called, uh, formed a group called AFRON, the African Robotics Network, and their first order of business was to hold a $10 robot design challenge to see if anyone could build a robot cheap enough for $10 so it could be affordable and used in African schools and uh, universities. That was held in 2012, and they would accept prototypes costing up to $100. So I thought, surely it's possible to build a robot out of a joystick. So I started by cutting the sides off a uh, USB joystick, turning those rumble motors out and taking the weights off, and using them to drive some wheels. And so now you've suddenly got a uh, robot, or oh, sorry, a joystick, which is able to pull itself along the ground. And we'll just pass that around. Sure. Now your robot needs to be able to interact with the world. And so what I did is I just drilled a couple of holes in the joysticks and put some chupa chups in there. So again, like Lego, um, the rest of the world calls them chupa chups. Um, uh, but so the idea is when your robot hits something, the chupa chups go doing, and you can actually tell that you've just bumped into something. So they're actually functional. And underneath here is a very simple circuit inside some drinking straws to allow your robot to follow a line. Now, chup chup translates to something like suck suck. So I called my robot Suckerbot and entered it in the competition. And the results were announced at Maker Fair New York back in 2012. So in the traditional roaming robot category, Harvard University won with their Killerbot, which costs $43 each. Killerbot because there's meant to be a thousand, not because they're meant to kill people. Um, the all-in-one robot category was won by a group from India for $33. And the tethered robot category, category was won by Suckerbot for a total of $8.96 US. So my little uh, chupa chup robot actually won that part of the competition. And it was featured in Popular Mechanics, uh, the Thai newspaper, um, Chinese websites, German websites, Finnish websites. Um, and in America, they're a little bit concerned about the name. They thought Saka might have some negative connotations, so I agreed to change the name to Lollibot. And in 2013, they paid $20 to send my $10 robot to America to appear at a, a science museum. And so I'll just finish by showing you a very quick video of uh, Suckerbot and uh, some of the, uh, the impact that that robot has had uh, since then.
Okay, so uh, that's all we've got time for today. If you've got any questions, we're at location 16 over near the TAFE entrance. So if you want to play some multiplayer Guitar Hero or if you've got some questions, if you'd like to have more of a look at Lollibot, please uh, come and see us today. But uh, thank you very much for coming.